Hello. Today I want to talk to you about a certain category of volunteer souls. From a spiritual perspective, enduring consistent mistreatment and betrayal can indeed be a challenging and painful experience. When a person radiates a higher vibrational frequency, they may indeed attract individuals who are operating from lower vibrations. And in turn, this will eventually lead to conflicts and betrayals. And it almost seems like it's not fair, right? It almost seems like, why is this always happening to me? In such situations, turning inwards, inwards for that higher vibrational person can seem like a natural response because you seek solace, you seek understanding, you seek healing within yourselves. And this inward journey may involve a lot of introspection, a lot of self-reflection, a lot of spiritual practices which are aimed at restoring balance and finding inner peace despite the external circumstances. I get it, it really hurts. Being betrayed hurts. From a spiritual standpoint, it is essential for the high vibrational individual to recognize that their experiences with others are reflections of different energies and some of which the higher vibrational person may themselves be putting out. While they cannot control the actions of others, they have the power to choose how they respond to those actions and how to cultivate compassion, forgiveness, and resilience in the face of adversity. After all, you have to ask yourself, after you were betrayed, did you lash out? Did you seek to understand? And I'm not saying it's not natural to want to, but just sometimes we have to think about the energies we project as well. And so these experiences can serve as profound lessons for growth and for transformation. And it can guide the individual who is enduring all this to greater self-awareness, greater authenticity, and greater alignment with their true purpose and higher self. Through this journey, they may discover deeper levels of empathy, wisdom, and spiritual connection, and ultimately learn how to transcend the limitations imposed by external circumstances and find true liberation within themselves. In other words, this is a test on learning not to control what others do, but what you do when you are exposed to others and the way they react to you. Um, in addition, the uh, thoughts and emotions and actions, these can emit energies at various levels. And so a higher vibrational being should try to exude positivity, love and compassion and draw inward individuals towards themselves, even if they are at lower frequencies, but especially if they're at similar or higher frequencies. Even though you might feel uncomfortable or threatened by the lower frequency, the discord and conflict that results isn't going to last forever. Keep in mind that initially low vibrational individuals are often triggered by the radiant presence of someone vibrating at a higher frequency. This sort of is like a deep seated discontent and discomfort within those beings as the higher vibrational energy serves as a mirror and it kind of reflects back on them the issues they haven't worked out, the issues they haven't resolved, their own insecurities, their negative patterns. And when you bring that to light, it's gonna make a lot of people angry and upset and not understanding. And so they're gonna use defense mechanisms such as lashing out or betraying um, that higher vibrational individual as a means of maybe asserting control or protecting their ego uh, a lot of these, higher, these uh, lower vibrational people may turn out to be narcissists. Uh, deception frequently is going to enter the picture when these low vibrational individuals are trying to find ways to react to this higher vibrational energy. They may use manipulation. They may use deceit. They may want a sense of power or superiority to show this higher vibrational person that, no, you're not better than me. You, you can't be better than me. And so they're going to use subtle lies. They're going to use aggressive behaviors. They're going to be gaslighting, they're going to be exploiting, they're going to be manipulating. They want to eventually undermine the higher vibrational being and they're going to employ tactics uh, aimed at sowing doubt and confusion and distrust, further making the conflict worse. They want to knock the higher vibrational person off their pedestal and make them you know, go down to their level and roll around in the dirt as well. So this kind of landscape, which is fraught with mistreatment and betrayal, can really be an arduous journey, but there is a purpose to it. The inherent resilience and inner strength of vibrational peoples is that yes, they're not immune to the pain or the disillusionment, but 
they can be tough, resilient individuals who can learn how to get tougher, that they understand that there actually is a reason why they've been sent into the world. It's something that they agreed on. It's something that they agreed to do, to come into the lives of a lot of people, to change those lives, to touch those lives, that but for the presence of that higher vibrational being, that they would not eventually be put on their path to self-awareness and, 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 and spiritual evolution. So this is actually very courageous and it also allows for soul searching and introspection on behalf of both the higher vibrational purpose, person as well as the lower vibrational person who's now starting to uh, feel that their, their, their ego is broken down. And so the higher vibrational person is now learning to distinguish between their true essence and the projections and judgment of others as they're on their healing journey now, as they start to heal. And so the higher vibrational person understands the mistreatment they endure is not a reflection of how much they're worth, how much their value is, but it's a reflection of the internal struggles and unresolved issues for which the people around them have a lot of lessons to learn. So as a higher vibrational person, it's almost like you took this upon yourself to face this adversity with grace and resilience. And that as this higher vibrational being, you're helping to cultivate virtues such as forgiveness and compassion and empathy. And you recognize that everyone is on their own journey and they may be at different levels of spiritual evolution, but that we all are striving for this. We're trying to raise the general consciousness. And so these unconscious patterns, these conditioning that may have come from other people who hurt those people, their presence is helping to wash that away slowly with time. It's not, it's not an easy task though, right? Um, and so when you think about the pain and disillusionment that the higher vibrational person experiences, you have to remain steadfast in your commitment to live authentically and with integrity. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing to fix. Don't let yourself be lowered by the attacks of the lower vibrational people, but always continue to held steadfast, radiate love and light in a world that is shrouded in darkness. So the higher vibrational person in this sense becomes a beacon of hope and of inspiration for others and then eventually comes to illuminate the path for others who are lost or struggling. Uh, the high vibrational person can transmute pain into wisdom and find beauty in the midst of chaos and this will serve as a testament to the transformative power of the human spirit. Ultimately, the journey of the higher vibrational being is one of profound growth and spiritual evolution. Through their experiences of adversity and betrayal, they may emerge even stronger, even more wiser and more resilient, embodying the timeless truth that love is the most potent force in the universe, capable of transcending even the darkest shadows of the human condition. So this is something that high vibrational people signed up for this is the mission as crazy as it sounds you chose this this wasn't forced on you you agreed before you incarnated to do this so think about the concept of pre-incarnation agreements or soul contracts which suggest that before we're born into physical existence our souls engage in a conscious and deliberate planning process during this process we may choose certain experiences challenges and relationships that will facilitate our growth and evolution on a soul level as well as kickstart the growth of other lower vibrational people around this high vibrational person right it's choosing to embody a high vibrational frequency and experiencing hurt betrayal and mistreatment by others because the soul does so with a clear understanding that the lessons and opportunities for spiritual growth that can be learned it can actually be rather amazing for all involved, particularly for the person who chose that soul contract. This choice is not made lightly, but with a profound awareness of the challenges and sacrifices involved. So this soul contract is made between God and the higher vibrational person, um, a collaboration with the divine and the higher realms of consciousness, where the soul willingly agrees to incarnate into a physical body and navigate specific life experiences in service of this spiritual evolution. It is a sacred agreement and it is guided by thoughts of love, wisdom, and the desire for soul expansion. The purpose behind choosing such a path is multifaceted. 
Firstly, experiencing adversity and betrayal can serve as catalysts for profound interdimensional transformation as well as awakening. Through these trials, the soul has the opportunity to develop qualities such as greater resilience, compassion, forgiveness, and unconditional love. I know I myself struggle with this many times. I am human, right? I am a spirit undergoing a human experience. I'm not perfect. So you try to embody that high vibrational sp uh, frequency and you're doing this amidst challenging chaotic circumstances. Your soul acts as a beacon of light and inspiration for others. Through this example, you can demonstrate the power of love and consciousness to transcend the limitations of the ego and to find peace and fulfillment amidst the chaos of the world. You're built tough and you're built tough for a reason. The Most High God built you that way so that you could endure. So the soul that chooses this path is trying to balance karmic debts and resolve past life conflicts as well as lessons. By consciously confronting and working through these unresolved issues from previous incarnations, the contracting soul can achieve a greater sense of closure as well as liberation, paving the way for a spiritual advancement in future lifetimes. These experiences have value. They are definitely worth something. And you're here because you want to be here to do this. The soul's decision to undergo experiences of suffering and mistreatment is driven by this deep sense of purpose and a commitment to the soul growth and evolution. It becomes a testament to the inherent courage, resilience, and wisdom of the soul, as well as its unwavering dedication to the journey of self-discovery and spiritual awakening. It's not an easy path. It's a very tough one, and it's not for the faint of heart. While the journey may be challenging and fraught with pain, the soul trusts in the guidance and support of God, the Creator, Source, the Divine, knowing that every experience, no matter how difficult, is ultimately an opportunity for soul expansion and divine revelation. I hope that you found this message helpful. I am going to leave on that here. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please support my channel so I can continue to deliver more content. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.